What's up, beautiful people? My name is Derek Standifer, and I have the high honor, the amazing privilege to interview Miss Stephanie on Solve It Sundays. When I tell you, I've been knowing her for the better part of 10 years, and it is amazing to see her grow and develop into the superstar that she is. Miss Stephanie, how are you good, ma'am? Man, I'm doing great. Thanks so much for having me. I really appreciate it. I, I, really, I really appreciate you for um, for agreeing to do the interview. Um, you actually helped help uh, do some modeling for African, not African. Christina, she she you know she brought you on board to do some modeling for African, not African. And I'm so grateful for you. Everything you do, you are a woman tour, a role model to Ayana and to a whole bunch of other people. But definitely my baby girl. So um, just thank you for being for letting your 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 fire shine bright so you can pass that flame on to other people. Man, it's dope to know you. Man, most definitely. You know, I feel like there were so many people before me that did it for me that showed me I was capable of doing it. So the least I can do is try to pay it for it. So. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So um, here on Solve It Sundays, what we do is we go through the twists and turns of solving the room and we juxtapose them to the twists and turns of solving your life to where you are and the trajectory that you are on. For those of y'all watching, if y'all want to comment, um, we can ask Miss Stephanie some questions live. I'm telling y'all, she's a beast in her own right. Um, amazing things are in store for her, and y'all really want to pick her brain tonight. So, um, well, before we get started, the first step of solving the Rubik's Cube, the first step of solving life is to believe. So, what is the belief? What do you plan on doing when it's all said and done? I know you wear many hats. It's it's a long, beautiful list of uh, resume. So, what's the end goal for Stephanie? Ooh, um, so, end goal for me, I guess, um, maybe more short, short term is graduation. Um, I'll be graduating with my doctorate in the next two semesters here. Um, my doctorate in biostatistics and epidemiology. Um, my research, my regular like research for my dissertation is um, actually on the African-American athlete um, and metabolic syndrome within them and how African-Americans are more susceptible to cardiovascular diseases in comparison to their counterparts. Um, so I, I guess long term, it's just figuring out how to kind of encompass everything. I feel like I've been in school for so long and I've learned so much that I really want to incorporate all of it. My plan is to open my own wellness facility, um, an all encompassing gym, um, mental health facility um, for athletes, as well as just your common individual um, to kind of be a one stop shop for everything. So that's my long term goal. That's dope, y'all. She she really been humble. She's a she's a track coach at FAMU. <laughs> um, she's doing COVID. She's on the front line at COVID fighting this coronavirus. I mean, it's amazing. It's amazing to know what you're doing. She's very humble, uh, very humble spirited individual. So I, I told her to brag, but you know when you got people who just kind of, <laughs> just kind of do that thing without their accolades. So we appreciate you for that. Um, so. Um, after you believe in yourself, after you believe in yourself, the second step of solving the rules cube, the second step of solving life is to solve your cross. Solving your cross um, is to identify the reasons, the whys. Um, so, so, for example, some reasons might be who you want to make proud. I'm a father. I want my babies to look up to me and say, I want to make my daddy proud. So what are some of the reasons and some of the whys that you are um, carrying the torch that you're carrying, good man? Um, I would say that for one, my mother um she's always been a why for me i just she's such a strong individual i saw her do so much growing up that i just i want to be able to give back to her i want to retire my mother like that's my main goal for everything that i do and all the businesses that i have and all the jobs and different accolades that i may obtain it's because i want to eventually be able to retire my mother um i think another one of my whys is to leave some type of legacy I feel like um, a lot of individuals in my life have legacies that have played a huge role in, you know, the decisions that I've made or the, the path that I've taken. And I want to be able to leave a legacy for those that are coming behind me, um, mm -hmm. whether that be through my modeling, whether that be through my entrepreneurship, whether that be through my studies, um, having some way to say, hey, I left this mark. I made this change. So mm -hmm. those are a couple of my whys. I told you before the before we got on the interview that um you are definitely a woe mentor to Ayana. Uh I need her to, you know, she's a, a brightly bright young, a bright young girl. And I need people in her life, you know, like you, so she can look up to and say, if she can do it, I can do it. And you know, a model and a PhD at the same time. You know, it's it's not it, some people are just comp comp compartmentalized into one avenue, into one area. Definitely. Dope to see you st striving and thriving in all different kinds of areas. So thank you for that, good man. Thank you for that. Um Step three 
of solving the Rubik's Cube. Step three of solving life is to fill in your corners. So this is two parts. So the first part, um, what kind of friends, who you call friends, what kind of friends do you have that push you and motivates you to be the best version of yourself, good man? I think I've always been big on surrounding myself around people that are doing more than me, doing bigger than me, that have bigger goals, bigger plans. I, I never want to be the person with the biggest ideas in the room mm. um, because I think I've been there, done that. And, I, and I've and i seen that, unfortunately, there's nothing to really feed off of. When you're in an environment where it's, it's give and take, where I have a little bit to give to you, but you have a little bit to give to me and we can grow with each other, it's the best type of environment and it's the best place for success. Mm. So I've always tried to surround myself by you know with individuals that have that like-mindedness of we want to go get it but we want to do bigger and better and we're never complacent never happy with where we are so yes ma'am i keep telling people i'm glad you said that. i tell people all the time i have no problem with being the dumbest person in my circle you know um Definitely. every time i have conversations with the people in my circle i'm learning new information gaining new knowledge i mean we have to humble ourselves to know that i'm not a know-it-all as a matter of fact, the more I know, the more I know I need to know more. So I surround myself with people who can connect the dots for me and put things in a place for me that I'm not I'm not able to do so. So that's a great answer. Great answer. Um, part two, part two of filling in your corners. Part two of uh, filling in your corners is to immerse yourself in a positive environment. So outside of the friends, what kind of environment do you surround yourself in to strengthen your mental, your physical, your spirit well-being, your mindfulness? Um, you know, this is like 2020 was a crazy, a crazy year. So what advice would you have to people who need to immerse themselves in the environment for, for holistically being a better version of themselves? Definitely. I think you have to find your getaway and it doesn't mm -hmm. necessarily have to be a physical thing. Um, mm -hmm. Whatever your getaway is for you that can kind of allow you to be the person that you are outside of all the jobs and outside of all the work. For me, it's the gym. That's my go to place, although I am a personal trainer. And so a lot of work happens at the gym when I'm there at night by myself or just working out on my own, that's my place to kind of decompress and clear my mind. And I kind of set up my next day, like, okay, what all do I have to do? How do I, what do I want to function as, or what do I, what am I, what is my goal going to be? You just have to figure out a way to kind of separate yourself from all the hustle and bustle of life sometimes. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the easiest way to be successful. You know, the easiest kind of environment to put yourself in to say, okay, now I can make things happen. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of times we're, we're living, at least, at least for myself, I live a lot in the spotlight. Um, a lot of things that I do are on social media or in, you know, even with working for the Department of Health, a lot of times I'm on the forefront you know, talking on behalf of organizations and things of that nature. And so sometimes it's nice to just be Stephanie and not be, you know, on behalf of or speaking on terms of, you know, it's just me. Um, and I think when I'm in the gym and, and on my own, that's my that's my space to be me. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I wholeheartedly agree. Um, we definitely need our getaway, um, especially, you know, for public figures. When you're, when you're an individual who's in the spotlight, and, you know, your your job, your duty always requires you to be in front of people. It, it can get draining sometimes. You know, it can get draining. Even in the I appreciate the, the honor and the, and the ability to serve people. But you have to make sure that you're able to recharge yourself so you can be the best servant that you can be. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. You need that getaway. You need that space where you can get away. And like you say, just be yourself. You know, I just want to be myself. And without people judging me or being cognizant of what I need to do or what I can't do. So, yeah, thank you for that. Thank you for sharing that. Definitely. Um, step four of solving the Rubik's Cube, step four of solving life is to take it to the next level. Now, taking it to the next level, uh, it simply means to continue to grow, to continue to get better. Um, so what are the ways that you develop yourself? What are the ways that you grow? Um, I read books. I, I, I go to YouTube University. Um, I, attend, I listen to podcasts and I attend personal development sessions all the time. But how do you become a better version of Stephanie? Ooh, I mean, I feel like you took a, a page out of my book. I'm all for YouTube University. I'm all for Clubhouse jumping on um, and listening to people that are, like I said, doing better than me, doing more than what I'm doing. Um, 
there are so many free resources to teach you so much more than what you know about your craft. Um, and I always try to find like, so Sundays are usually like my decompress day and I'll have podcasts running in the background because you're listening even when you're not listening and you're retaining even when you're not listening necessarily. And so I'll have those running in the background just to give me a little bit more knowledge. And it's funny because then I'll end up in a conversation. I'll be like, no, I think it's this. And I'm like, why do I know that? But it's because of something I had playing in the background. Um, <laughs> but I'm always for just being a sponge. Um, when people have events like that are, you know, a lot of people tend to play this role, especially in Tallahassee, of, you know, there are a lot of personal trainers. Um, and so it is a very cutthroat, competitive field. Um, but I'm really big on, I'm going to go out to your event and I'm going to attend and I'm going to learn what you do. I'm going to, you know, pay you for a seven day training session because I can learn something from what you know. You can learn something from me. I can learn something from you. And I'm always big on figuring out what someone knows more than me and then learning that thing mm -hmm. because they're going to forever know more than you until you know what they know. So I think, I think that's a great, a great way to put it. Um, a lot of people think that your competition, you can't learn from your competition. They're your competition. Right. You can learn from them. I was having a conversation earlier. I'm a speaker. Um, and I, and I'm a big believer in studying the great speakers and I consistently study them and I love getting feedback. Slow down when you speak. You have a list when you talk and I love perfecting those, you know, working on those things. And it's a constant, it's a constant journey to perfect the craft that you're already in. And we can get comfortable, you know, when you're in the field and you and you and you're a, you're a personal trainer, when you when you're the go to person, you can get to a point. A lot of people get to a point where they're the know it alls. I know it all already. I don't need to go to any more trainings. I don't need any more sessions. I'm good. And, you know, those are the people who are stuck in their same place. They kind of plateau out. But. Right. It's, it's a beautiful thing when you attend somebody else's trainings, when you attend somebody else's workshops. One, you soak up what they know. That's a great networking opportunity. And two, um, you know, you, you develop these mastermind groups and these accountability partners when you network with the individual. And understand, it's not a competition. You know, there's enough. Right. Even though, even in Tallahassee, there are a lot of, a lot of personal trainers. Yeah. You don't have to make it. people go around, though. though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, people go to the gym for, for a week. Oh, I'm a personal trainer now. I can show you how to get your body right. And, you know, you're yeah. trying to speed up the process of, uh, of, of mastering that craft. You know, exactly. Malcolm Gladwell, um, he wrote a book called The Outliers. Yeah. In The Outliers, he mentioned the 10,000 hour rule. It takes 10,000 hours to master something. I can attest y'all, Stephanie has been doing this for a long time. She's been doing this for, for a long, long time. She's been an athlete since she was since birth. And now she's in the same <laughs> realm, in the same lane. And you want somebody who's been sticking and staying. You don't want people who've been jumping around doing, I'm doing this and now I'm doing this and now I'm doing this. And, you know, she Stephanie wears a lot of hats, but she's stuck to her core. So, um, yeah, 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 yeah. The fifth and the final step of solving the rules, Cube, the fifth and the final step of solving life is to see the bigger picture. Now, seeing the bigger picture means to keep your commitment to your commitment. Sometimes life may throw you some trials and tribulations and you're like, God, why me? Why does it got to happen to me? I'm just trying to be the best version of myself and serve my community. Why does it got to keep happening to me? So what is your advice for overcoming these obstacles and keeping your commitment to your commitments? Um, I always just have to tell myself, I mean, not to sound cliche, but to tell myself, what is the bigger goal? I, the end of 2020 really just kind of knocked me upside the head. I got in a car accident the day after Thanksgiving. Um, then I was in the, you know, was in the hospital for a little bit, got fine, you know, was coming back to, got in a second car accident um, two days before Christmas. And I just, you know, I was talking to my parents and I'm just like, man, I don't know what, I don't know if God trying to tell me something. I don't know if I'm doing something wrong, you know, or whatever the case may be. But I think the big thing that we forget is that although it may sound cliche, everything does happen for a reason. Mm -hmm. um, it made me slow down. 
I had to. I wasn't. I had to wait for my car to get fixed. I had to wait for this. I had to wait till they cleared me to get back in the gym. And I had to just kind of be in the house to myself and really slow down and be like, what are the goals? What are the plans? And it made me, you know, look at my brand and say, what do we need to fix for it? You know, Mm -hmm. I had time to go back through and get a second certification and um, do an elite certification in nutrition while I was stuck at home. Like a lot of the things that people kind of got to do at the beginning of the pandemic, I finally got to do at the end because Mm -hmm. I actually was finally sitting down. And so although it was a negative thing and there's going to be negative things in our lives all the time, we can either choose to wallow in that negativity and say, oh, woe is me. Why is this happening to me? Or we can see something negative and say, okay, but what is that teaching me? Or what can I learn from this? How can I grow from this and change every single stumbling block into a building block towards our success? And so I think that's One of the most important things in any endeavor that you have is not letting something bad that may be happening to you keep you from what your ultimate goal is. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I think it's a beautiful thing um, when you are able to turn your pain into power. Definitely. When when these trials and tribulations happen, you know, God, um, God gives the strongest burdens to the strongest people. The heaviest burdens go to the strongest people. So, you know, and sometimes... um, High achievers, they're always on the go. They're always moving. I, moving. I got to constantly do something. I got to do, I got to do, I got to do. And sometimes you just need a, a, a period of just, let me just be stationary for a while and sit That's still. That's real. That's and real. Figure out, you know, and now you, you certified in a whole new area of, and yeah. you know, got, some, got, some, got some knowledge under your belt just by being stationary and slowing down for a little bit. And sometimes we need those periods. Sometimes we we can't we can't find the time. We can't make the time to slow down and God just kind of throw us a curveball. Let me slow you down for a little bit. Let me slow you down just for a tad bit so you can be a better servant to mankind and womankind. Sorry for the accidents, but thank you for the bounce back. Thank you for the get back and the, and the push right. back. Right. Definitely. Mm-hmm. You, you just, you're thankful for the, the positives of it. The fact that, you know, I can remember, I mean, you, like I say, you've known me for 10 years and I can remember back in the day, if I would have gotten a car accident, I kind of would have just been immobile for a good, good month, months or so, but my car was totaled out after my Thanksgiving accident and I I bought a new car December 4th. And I, I sat there and I was like, wow, it's a blessing in itself to even be able to turn around and buy another car. It wasn't, it wasn't expected. It wasn't something that I was planning on doing. I had just got my first car the beginning of this, the beginning of 2020, but to be blessed enough to say, well, I guess I'll just go buy another car is I'm thankful for that. Mm-hmm. over the car accident in itself so mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah yeah yeah. sometimes these tragedies man they show us i'm blessed man like i am truly blessed and sometimes we just have to just sit there and just you know god thank you for thank you for allowing me to appreciate the things that i already have the things that i that i'm able to do on my own so i appreciate that um so we have officially solved our root shoe officially solved our root shoe now that's a bonus still I know y'all all have seen somebody try to solve the Rubik's Cube by taking the stickers off the Rubik's Cube. Mm-hmm. Um, I know y'all seen people in life try to find the shortcuts, the cheats in life. Um, so, Stephanie, what is your advice? You know, we, we outline these five steps. So what is your advice for people who are trying to find the shortcuts in life? It's not worth it. It doesn't work. It always comes back to bite you. Um, I will say, um, even with my brand, when I first started, and I don't think I took shortcuts on purpose i took shortcuts because i didn't fully believe in myself yet Mm. and so i did a lot of like oh let me do it this way so i don't have to invest as much or let me do it this way and it all came full circle and i ended up doing what i needed to do to begin with it it may feel like you're getting somewhere you know ahead but just like your rubik's cube you take all the stickers off it's nothing's gonna really work the same Mm. way right even Mm. if i try to stick them back on i can still tell where you made all of these shortcuts and took all these stickers off it's the same thing in life you may think that you know oh well you know i i've been in the gym for two weeks so now i'm a personal trainer and all these people you know may come to me and pay but the results are going to prove that you don't know what you're doing because Mm -hmm. you took shortcuts it's the same thing you may think you're getting away with it but more than likely you won't. It's going to come back to kind of show you up. So you might as well just do it the right way to begin with. Exactly, exactly. You, if you're a personal trainer, you, you need to have a certification. You need to tell people what they need to be eating while they're working out. You right. need to tell people how much sleep they need to be getting. Um, and All diets, all workout plans don't work for all people. It's certain diets, certain workout plans 
they have completely different results. So yeah, you got to be trying to do this stuff. Um, we got Miss Camille Lewis. She is a beastess in her own right. Um, I thank hey, you. Camille. This is a, this is a needed word. Thank you. She <laughs> actually she don't know this yet, but she's gonna be an uh, interviewee on Solve It Sunday. She's doing amazing things in the community as well. Awesome. Yeah, 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 yeah. So Miss Stephanie, from the top of my heart to the bottom of my soul, thank you for agreeing uh, to share your wisdom with us. It's been a dope. It's been dope knowing you. It's been dope. To, it's a dope uh, pleasure to call you a friend. Um, and I'm, I wish you so much success, so much success in the future, near future, and long term future. If you could stay on for me for a hot second. Um, for those of y'all who are watching, y'all be great like the lakes. Be blessed like a sneeze. And make sure y'all follow Stephanie and what she got going on. I'm telling you, she does amazing things. If y'all got any, um, any, I have a daughter. I have a six-year-old daughter. And I can tell you right now, Stephanie has no choice. She ain't got no choice but to mentor. I won't mentor Ayana. She needs, she needs that kind of push. She needs that kind of, you know, that strive for it. Y'all know Kamala Harris. You know, this is uh, a, a pre-version of what she was before she became vice president. You know, this is what Stephanie's doing now. 20 years is crazy. What um, It's going to be amazing to see what she's doing. So y'all be great. Y'all be blessed. And I'll see y'all next Sunday.